Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today I wanna to talk about Mila maintenance because it's pretty important. And if you just bought a Mila, this is going to be kind of a guide on what's what and what some of these things are because there are some things that are very confusing because these are sold in so many different countries, so many different languages. And let's be honest right now, Mila makes like 30 different models. So, and they've been doing that at any given time for at least in North America, we've been, I'd say past 35 years. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of different versions out there. Today's focus is going to be primarily on canisters, though I will roll in some footage of uprights as well. They basically make one upright uh, currently. So the first thing is I want to explain like the lifespan of Amila. Now this machine here is from 1994 and it's Amila 300 series. Long time ago, not made. Uh, really the only thing this has had done to it, and you can see here, is it's had a new lid at some point put on it. That's about it. Um, other than that, it runs just fine. Um, what I want to show you is that it's super clean inside, and this is what your Mila should look like inside, is it should look super clean if the machine's been maintained properly. Now, the bags, I really recommend that you only use genuine bags. I have a whole video on this, and I'll put a link to that, what happens if you don't. But basically, that will be the end of your vacuum. These bags are pretty special, not only in how fine of the dust they capture, but how much airflow that they allow. And there's basically two different versions of the bags. And you can tell there's a red and a blue version. The red is known as FJM. The blue is known as GN. And then green for the upright is known as U. And you will see, no matter what the Mila, let's, uh, let's get a newer one here. Put it side by side. So I have here a, a newer Mila. We see it takes the same bag. And we can see right here the dock is red and it says M. So we know this is an FJM machine. So that's how you know how to buy bags. And every time you open a Mila, there's something really important you need to do, which is always reseat the bag. Never just open and close. Don't do that because they pull the bag out just like so. So keep that in mind. Anytime you open it, you always want to just push and reseat the bag. So how to know when your bag's full? Well, you have an indicator that lets you know when the bag is full. It's not a light, it's just a gauge. And it's orange, so keep that in mind. So when the bag gets all the way full, it will look something like this. Most of the time though, when the bag is full, it will be something of the sort. When the bag is full, it should look something like this. It should be puffed out, kind of like a pillow, pretty dense. Now, this is a bag that's not ready to be changed. It's got plenty of life, even though there's about a pound of dirt in there. Your brand new bag will look like so. Now, some people will try to put laundry sheets in their machine somewhere. Why, you can suck these up through the bag. If they're on the floor, that's not a problem. Do not attempt to put this anywhere in the machine. This will hurt the machine, restrict airflow. And if you put it, say here, you'll actually destroy the uh, windings on the motor. This stuff is extremely corrosive to electrical components. As far as shutting and opening your meal again, always reseat your bag. Very, very simple. If your meal is having trouble shutting, it is either because the bag dock is not properly in place or there is no vacuum bag in place. And that, again, spans between all models of their vacuum cleaners. There are basically two types of Mila vacuums. There are your power nozzle machines, and then there are your straight suction machines. And you can tell that whether or not the hose has electrical running through it and a rotating brush powered by electricity. If you have a machine like this, that's just straight suction and a brush, really the only maintenance you need to do is when you're done vacuuming, suck the hair off this and out of the wheels. Occasionally you might have to go in the wheels and clean them out. Some machines like this, you really just need to clean. And this is top rack dishwasher safe if you let it dry for a few days. This attachment here has a quick release 
on the wheel and you wanna clean this occasionally, I suggest every few months. Quarterly is always a good maintenance schedule and you can see mine even has a little bit of fuzz in there. These floor tools typically last between 10 and 20 years, the lifespan of the product. So if you have a machine that has a air-driven turbo, like that, that does not have the electrical connections, you should, on a regular basis, probably every two to three weeks, cut all the hair out of this. Really important. Maybe once a year, once every two years, bring this to a dealer and have them lubricate it. A lot of dealers, if you just bring this section, it's a lot less expensive to get this service. This part of the machine, as long as you've used genuine bags and it's clean inside, there's no reason to really service these internally. A head like this that has the electric plug, and these are the two examples they're currently making. Um, these things need to be serviced every one to four years, depending on use. Um, I wouldn't go past that. The lubrications tend to dry out. I will note that some of the traditional petrol-based lubrications that they've used do sometimes dry up when they get into the country. So if it's squeaking or there's something uh, that just doesn't feel right, like it's doing more work, um, definitely consider getting it serviced where these get taken apart and cleaned. On a regular basis, every two to four weeks, cut the hair off on this line. There's no reason to change the belt or open these up with regular maintenance. Um, there will be cases, of course, you know, somebody gets a lemon or something, but there's really no reason for the consumer to ever get into these. Now, if your wheels squeak when they move, you can take a drop of oil on the edge of the wheels and lubricate them. Just make sure you wipe off the excess. If you have one of these, you'll notice it has a height adjustment. And a lot of people don't quite understand how to adjust these. Just a real quick tutorial, since a lot of people do have trouble with it. One thing that might help you is a visual aid. Take a little bit of salt and throw it on your carpet. Starting with the highest setting, which is five, let's try it out. And you can see, not much. Let's bring it down a setting. Up, oh, you heard the sound change. You can see the stuff going in there. We'll turn the suction up. You can see stuff flying in there before you even get there. So we know that's adjusted right now. If you adjust it too low, it will either shut off or you'll notice the stuff doesn't really go in anymore. It's not flying in like it was when the machine was higher up. So that's a good indication of how to adjust with the height adjustment for your carpet. So I've been able to determine just by doing that, that this is a three. It might also be marked SC or SC plus depending on the nozzle. Now a little tip with these nozzles is it doesn't matter which one, one you have is when you go to release it, do not have the nozzle tilted up like that. Have it laying flat like this and then release it. And it should go easy like that. As you can see how easy that is to release. Now, if for some reason you keep trying to jam it like this, this nozzle is meant not to release like that so that you can roll it across the floor. So basically by doing this and then trying to hit the pedal, you can break the nozzle. So a little tip in how not to break your nozzle. Another thing with Mila is if for some reason you get something caught in there that you shouldn't, you notice the red light turned on with this nozzle. Well, I've turned it off. We're gonna clear this blanket. I've turned the machine back on and still the red light. Well, you want to hit the button right there and it will reset it. Now some of these lights are green, some of them are going to be orange, depending on the unit. Now, if you have a 228, which is a little bit more common now, this doesn't have any light. You simply just reset it. One of the things that's kind of confusing, but it's more straightforward than you think, are the speed controls on Mila vacuums. Whether you have 
something like a C3 that has these touch controls or something like a C2 or a C1 that would have a rotary dial. You have a maximum and a minimum setting on both of these. And then you have a whole bunch of symbols. I'll explain the symbols real quick. Basically, most of the time you want it on a maximum setting. More suction is better for most things. There are some times where you'll turn it down. This setting with the ear is the lowest that you can set it and it will still pick up off floor, whether that be carpet or a rug. So that's what that setting does. When you go to this setting, this is for like a delicate rug or a rubber backed rug. It's really not going to be cleaning efficiently through the wand when you go past this point. Now, these two settings, really you're not going to use too much. The minimum setting, on both of these is very useful, and I really recommend you do switch it to the minimum setting when you're using the dusting brush. If you don't do that, what we see is that the power of the suction of the machine actually sucks in the bristles over time and can deform the, the dusting brush. The other thing that can happen is you might not be able to push the dusting brush on certain surfaces because it sucks to it. So that's where, again, turning it down to a lower setting when we're using the dusting brush is generally a good idea. Now, there's no way to really tell when the end of your electrical cord is on a Mila unless you mark it. And I really recommend, no matter which model you buy, get some red tape or even some gray duct tape and six inches to a foot before the end. Put a marking on there so you know it's the end of the cord so you're not continuously trying to pull it and get more cord out that's not there. Those are my tips as a technician on keeping your Mila vacuum up and running for years to come. Typically they're designed to last a thousand working hours. So let me just go through it again. Buy genuine bags, change your filter once a year, clean the hair out of your brush roller. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing, checking us out on one of our other publishers here and have yourself a wonderful day.